Today, we will learn about gradients, which is considered a super important concept in the field of machine learning and vector calculus. In order to understand it properly, we need to first understand what a vector field is and how any quantity changes in space. Suppose you have a long metal plate, and at its center, you use a blowtorch to heat it. The heat will spread out from the center, creating a temperature that changes across the plate. The center of the plate is very hot, and as you move away from the center, it gets cooler and cooler. The temperature gradually decreases in all directions from the center. If we wanted to draw this temperature on a map, we could use colors, red for hot areas and blue for cooler areas. On this map, the center would be bright red, and as you move outward, the colors would fade toward blue. Now, if we plot this in 3D, the temperature map turns into a bump or hill. The top of the hill is the hottest point at the center, where x is 0 and y is 0, and the slope going down represents the temperature decreasing toward the edges. We can plot the temperature at any point along the z-axis, and it is calculated as, say, 10 minus the square of x minus the square of y. This means that, as x increases or decreases from 0, or as y increases or decreases from 0, z gets smaller, forming a smooth downward slope. On the heat map, the red color at the center shows the highest z, and the blue color near the edges shows lower z values. This hill is a perfect way to visualize gradients. Before we move further, let's think about something simpler. For a one-dimensional function, which is a curve on a 2D plot, the gradient is just the slope of the curve at any point. It tells us how steep the curve is and in which direction it is going up or down. We find this slope using the derivative of the function, right? The derivative measures how much the function changes if we make a tiny step in the x direction. If the slope is positive, the curve is going up, and if it is negative, the curve is going down. Now, let us combine all these ideas to understand partial derivatives and the gradient of a function. To do this, imagine we again have a flat metal plate. On this plate, the temperature is not the same everywhere. Some spots are hotter, forming small bumps, and some spots are cooler, forming pits. Together, they make a bumpy surface that goes up and down in different places. Before we think about the full gradient, let's simplify. Suppose we fix x at some value, say x equals 11, and we only move along the y-axis. If we trace a line along this fixed x, we get a curve like this. This curve shows how z changes as we move along y while keeping x constant. Along this curve, when the curve goes up, z is increasing, and when the curve goes down, z is decreasing. This is exactly what a partial derivative of z with respect to y measures, how fast z changes as we move along y, ignoring x for the moment. We can represent this slope using an arrow at some point, say this. Similarly, we can fix y at some value and move along x. The curve we get shows how z changes along x. The slope of this curve is the partial derivative with respect to x, so partial derivatives are just slopes along one direction at a time. They tell us how steep the surface is if we only move in that direction. We can represent this slope using an arrow at this same point. Now, the real magic happens when we combine these two directions. On our bumpy surface, the steepest way to climb a bump is not always exactly along x or y. Sometimes the fastest climb is diagonal, somewhere in between. This is where the gradient comes in. If you stand at a point on the surface, the gradient is like an arrow showing the fastest way uphill. So, mathematically, the gradient of a function is just a vector made by combining the partial derivatives of the function, or z along x and y. It is written using this nabla, or del operator, or this upside-down triangle. So the arrow considers both directions at once, giving a complete picture of how z changes around that point. And that's it.
This is what a gradient actually is. You know what? In machine learning, instead of temperature, we have a loss function, which tells us how wrong our model is. The gradient tells the model which direction to change its parameters to in order to reduce error the fastest. So eventually, the model follows the gradient to reach the lowest point, which represents the best possible solution. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.